Hello and welcome. I'm Kevin Wenning. This is a series of videos that I'm doing around photography refresher exercises. This is designed for folks who are either beginner photographers or maybe you just don't pick up your camera all that often and you're planning a vacation or holiday. You've got some special events coming up and you're thinking, I'd really like to pull out that fancy camera I bought and put it to some good use. But maybe you're a little bit intimidated by it and not know where to start. So this series of videos is designed to, first of all, help you get comfortable with your camera again. And then after that, walk you through some scenarios that you'll encounter in travel photography, since that's my specialty. And the idea is to give you some practice before you actually go on that vacation so you're ready to come home with photos that you're proud of. And in each video, I'll give examples based on my own photos, as well as exercises for you to work through. So all of those are downloads off of my website. And then on each page, I'll give you exercises making a photo that looks like each of these will help you to exercise or practice that specific topic that we're that we're covering. And then I'm going to end the series with, uh, or rather add on to the series here, some basic photo editing, because I feel strongly that learning to do some basic photo editing, understanding the components that make up your image, makes you a better photographer at the point of capture. So shutter speed will be our first video in the series here. We're going to look at everything between long creative shutter speeds up to capturing something in motion. In fact, the way that they're organized in the gallery I'm going to show you, I'm starting with this end of the spectrum at capturing everything in motion. So high shutter speeds and then moving down through some handheld shutter speeds for interior and then moving water and some indoor scenarios or nighttime scenarios where you'll have to practice long shutter speed to gather enough light to capture everything that you want to see. And then some creative scenarios that you can do with extra long shutter speeds as well. So if you are working through these, what you're going to do is take a photo that looks similar to each one of these on your worksheet. And this will give you the muscle memory to know where is this setting in my camera. Also, what happens when I take a photo at 1 320th of a second versus 1 30th of a second? And what do I do in a full daylight situation versus a, a dark interior situation? And if you're following along here on the video, look right here for the shutter speed or right down here also has the shutter speed of each photo that we're looking at. All right, I'm gonna move through these kind of quick because I don't want these videos to take too long. This is just going to give you some example go by photos. So we're starting with our fast shutter speed. Somebody that's moving on a bike, I want to freeze them in motion so I can show every last little thing. And sometimes you're not going to want to do that. You might want to show them in motion and we're gonna to get to that on the other end of the spectrum. This is one 300, or sorry, <laughs> one 32,000th of a second. Next situation, this is uh, a gentleman on the dunes, and I set this at 1 320th of a second, just based on based on the light. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. I didn't want it to be super, super bright. And 1 320th of a second down to maybe 1 125th of a second are sort of everyday shooting situations. Most situations that you encounter, you're going to use something in that range on your shutter speed. This next one, girl in motion. Uh, 1 320th of a second. I didn't want to make it too fast of a shutter speed. I would have liked to maybe make it a little bit faster so these clouds back here wouldn't be too blown out. But I also wanted a little bit of detail here inside of their hut. So 1 320th worked for me. Uh, she was playing here for a few minutes, so I had a few few seconds there to think about my shutter speed and just play with it a little bit. Uh, I probably could have done a little bit better with this if I had really contemplated the scene a little bit more. But uh, that's that's what worked for me in the moment. Uh, again, gentleman on a bike, 1 320th of a second. Uh, some people will say you must use your shutter speed at 1 4,000th of a second if you really want to freeze somebody in motion, like you know, playing sports or riding a bike. Not the case always. Uh, the faster that you can go, the better, because you're going to really freeze that and have it tack sharp. But then all of the other situations surrounding your photo have a lot to do with that too, such as how bright is the scene? How So how fast do I have to go in order to capture that uh, at, a, at a proper, you know, at a proper exposure? And this one is a little bit grainy. You can see here I've got ISO 800. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about ISO, but the lower ISO that you can, can set your camera to, the better as your ISO raises, you're going to get a little bit grainier photos. 
Uh, but this one was not specifically to capture this gentleman on his bike in motion. That's my friend Andy on our bike ride in Morocco. Uh, I didn't want to, so this was designed really to capture him riding through the landscape, not really just to capture him uh, in, a, in a sharp photo. We got some other photos of him for that purpose. All right, moving on. This was in a dark setting in the markets in uh, Rasani, I think it was in Morocco. And one two hundredth of a second is probably a little too low. So I was panning with this guy as he was riding, means I put, pointed my camera at him, set my focus, and then I moved my camera at the same speed that he was riding his bike in order to capture him at the moment that he was riding in front of this shop. And that reason I used two hundred one two hundredth of a second is this is a dark scene. This was a, a, in a dark market, so I needed to set my shutter speed a little lower in order to capture more light. So faster shutter speed make, makes your photo darker, lower shutter speed is going to make it lighter. So right now we're kind of in between these two situations, capturing something in motion and starting to do a little bit more handheld where we're starting to, we want to get a little bit more light gathered on the sensor. All right. Uh, I'm not going to stop on each of these. We're going to look at some of the, some of the critical photos here to help you understand uh, what we're, what we're going for. Uh, again, a little bit lower shutter speed, one one hundredth of a second. I can still do that handheld with no problem. ISO 250, a Probably could have raised this a little bit more, but I didn't really need to. Uh, all I wanted was a little bit of an idea of what was happening here in the background. I was focusing on the arch here, just uh, that was my focus point. And then I just wanted to get a sense of what was happening back here. There's really not too much interesting other than these people walking through the alley. So I needed to gather enough light that I could recover, you know, just those silhouettes there in the background. Uh, this situation with the birds, one one hundredth of a second. Normally I might do this uh, with a little bit lower shutter speed, say 1 60th, 1 30th of a second. But I had had the fortune to stand here for about five minutes and I was watching the birds. So I got to play with my shutter speed and based on the available light and how quick the birds were moving, 1 100th was, was just perfect. And that's the benefit, of course, of digital photography. You know, don't worry too much if you if you spend 20 frames, uh, you know, just playing with the, the setting and, and just seeing what's happening. I mean, that's <laughs> that's digital photography. You can take as many photos as you want. If none of them work, then dump your memory card and start over. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to play with those settings. Just see what you get in this kind of situation. Uh, another one in the streets of Marrakesh here. I had stood here for about five minutes. I dialed in my settings. I knew that 1 100th was about where I wanted to be in order to gather enough light in this dark alley. And then I hadn't planned on these guys riding past on their motorcycles, so I wasn't set to capture motion, but it happened that they were riding just slow enough. He was walking just slow enough that I still got them in pretty decent focus. You can see the faces aren't super sharp here, uh, again, because I raised my ISO a little bit, but I was pretty happy with the, with the photo overall, uh, considering the way that it came out. Um, this was a real nice one that came out good handheld at 1 80th of a second. And I did that again because this was kind of a dark situation, but uh, I wanted I wanted that shutter speed specifically so that I could capture enough light on this scene, but also stay handheld. So I didn't have to set up my tripod because when you're walking through markets like this, a lot of times uh, the people that live there are looking at you like, you know, don't, you don't belong there and you want to be, uh, you know, be sensitive to their situation. This is where they live. We don't live there. We're passing through, taking a few photos. So uh, rather than setting up a tripod, uh, I usually you know, try and take these things handheld as I'm walking through somebody's markets. Uh, next one, this is a good situation where I was on a tripod. I had time to actually set up my tripod, think about my, my shot, play with my settings a little bit, uh, contemplate, you know, how much light do I want coming into this versus how dark do I want some of these areas to be? And a lot of these are things that you can edit after the fact, you know, drop your shadows a little bit, increase the highlights. Uh, we're not going to talk about that in this video, but I do get into that in this series. Some of the basic video, or I'm sorry, some of the basic uh, photo editing skills that you might want to think about and practice. Because I, I do think that understanding how to edit your photos does make you a better photographer at the point of capture. Because you understand how much you can push and pull the highlights and the lights and darks and just what's going to happen with that photo once you start... Uh, you know, pushing and pulling the sliders and playing with it when you're editing it. So it helps you to capture a better photo uh, at the point of capture, like I said. Uh, this was a difficult situation. This ended up being a handheld photo. Uh, if I had time to set this up, of course, I would set it on a tripod, maybe even take a few different frames or bracket my images. Uh, this one, my group had left, the folks I was traveling with, 
I was standing here by myself and the chief here sitting up there, he said, why don't you take a you know group photo of us, take a portrait. I ended up emailing it back to somebody who could print it out and get it to them. So I was real happy with that. But uh, it, it's not the best photo because I was handheld. It was a very dark room, no light in here other than these the light coming through the windows behind these gentlemen. So that's blown out a little bit. Uh, one sixtieth of a second is about the, the max handheld speed that you want to be at. Uh, depending on the type of camera that you have, what sort of stabilization it has, what sort of sensor it has. Uh, if you have a larger sensor, full frame sensor, you're going to do a little bit better uh, with those lower shutter speeds in low light as well. Uh, I don't want to labor these points too much, but this is one of my example photos here. Uh, try handheld at 1 60th of a second in several different situations, in broad daylight, in a dark situation, in a dark room, and just see what kind of, uh, what kind of outcome you get. So definitely play with, play with this around 1 60th, 1 50th of a second. Here's another situation where I was handheld photographing over the rooftops of Chef Schoen in Morocco. Uh, just, I had raised my ISO a little bit, which means that I'm gathering more light, but that also adds grain to the photo. It's making the sensor more sensitive to light, uh, but it's also uh, not capturing as much detail. So lower ISO is always better. But uh, again, you know, play with those settings on your camera. Just see what you come out with when you're shooting around this 1 60th of a second handheld. And then some of these situations I'm gonna say are handheld. Some of them are going to be on tripod. And pay attention if you would here, looks like I need to add that in on one of these, uh, whether this is on tripod or handheld. As you go lower in shutter speed, of course, you're not going to be able to hold your hands super steady in order to, to take that photo. So you need to be on a tripod. You need your camera on a tripod in order to get a nice sharp photo. This one, uh, a lot of times I'll do this with landscapes, especially at dusk, uh, drop my shutter speed in order to uh, capture just a little bit more color, what's going on in the sky there. And I can do that because there's, it wasn't windy in this situation. If it were windy, then the wind would be blowing these bushes around and they would end up looking blurry, even, uh, you know, even at 1 40th of a second. So that's something else to be aware of is your shutter speed and what's going on around you. What's the environment doing? Uh, this one, folks walking up the dunes, I think this one ended up being handheld at 1 20th of a second. Similar here, 1 30th of a second. This was also a handheld photo. If you've got a newer camera, like I said, with good image stabilization in it, uh, you may be able to get away with a little bit lower shutter speed without putting your camera on a tripod, but I wouldn't always count on that. Put it on a tripod as often as you can. The reason that I'm shooting this at 1 30th of a second is I wanted it to be nice and bright. And this is in a dark situation. Here again, this was at dusk. The sun was going down. It was very dark. I needed to drop my shutter speed in order to gather more light in the scene. Remember, fast shutter speed equals darker images. Longer shutter speed equals lighter images. Longer shutter speed, shorter shutter speed. Okay, keep on moving here. So a couple more examples of landscape scenes. Uh, these I had the, the luxury of setting up on a tripod and dialing in my shutter speed to, to get the, the result that I wanted. Mostly I'm setting my shutter speed in landscape situations for the available light and how bright I want the photo to be. We'll get into just in a second here, uh, actually the very next image here, one quarter of a second, when you're starting to get into some artistic photos. Uh, if you do want a little bit of motion in your shot, that's where you're going to start to drop the shutter speed even more to both gather light and then start to show some motions, show what's going on in the environment. So you're not capturing something just static. Uh, you get a little bit more sense uh, in a still photo that there are people moving around, that there's something else happening. Uh, this one I was set up, I think I just put my camera on my backpack there in the airport and I played with my settings a little bit as there were people walking past. I didn't want somebody's face to be in focus here. I wanted it to be blurred. I wanted people to, I wanted to see people moving, but still capture enough light to show the reflections on the floor here. So one quarter of a second. Moving water. You're gonna start this off around half a second up to two, three, four seconds, depending on how smooth you want the water and how much light there is available in the scene. I'm gonna show you a couple more with moving water in a second here. Uh, I don't like my water to be super smooth. I like to see a little bit of grain, a little bit of motion in the water, uh, rather than showing it you know, perfectly silky smooth. Uh, two second exposure here I, means I got a little bit of smoothness in the water out here, but 
I was able to brighten up the foreground here because this was really dark back in the shadows. I wanted enough light here without blowing out my highlights, uh, meaning that the highlights in the, the sky would be too bright. This is a really good example uh, of night, <laughs> night photography in a city. Uh, I like to keep my shutter speed pretty fast, uh, usually around one, between one and four seconds. And what to consider here is I wanted a shutter speed that was fast enough that these lights weren't going to get too bright and blown out. Uh, we, and this is, again, a good example of knowing what you're going to get out of a photo after you do a little bit of editing to it. So this was brighter when I first shot it, and especially these lights here, I had to bring down the brightness on those so that they weren't overpowering the photo. And uh, I really don't, don't go too long on night photos specifically where I've got lights in the photo because those lights will overpower the photo and you won't get any detail in the shadows. Uh, so you could certainly do this as multiple frames. I think I might've even uh, blended a darker frame and a brighter frame to accomplish this. If you're shooting a, a night shot, uh, even if it's just uh, like architecture, like you can go out and practice this in front of your house at night, take a photo of your house at night with the, the lights on in the windows. If it's earlier in the evening and you've got a little bit of blue sky, you're gonna go around two to three second exposure. If it's completely dark, the sun is down and there are, you know, there's no light in the sky, let's say there's no moon even, you don't have any kind of additional light outside, then you might even go up to eight to 10 seconds in order to get a proper exposure, uh, meaning that the front of your house is bright enough that you can start to see some detail in there uh, so that you're, you're not blown out, but then it's not too dark on, uh, on the other hand. This is a good example of a dark interior, and this is kind of, you know, same situation we were talking about with maybe photographing your house outside at night. Uh, if it's really dark, you've got to go with a longer shutter speed. This one is a four seconds sh shutter speed to allow enough light gathered to show the interior of this dark space. Uh, this is the, the basement of, um, I don't know, some temple cathedral in uh, Jerusalem. And there are a couple of people here standing in the photo, and the four second exposure again allowed me to take this photo with them a little bit blurred. I didn't want anybody to be sharp in this photo. I don't like showing people's faces uh, if I can, can help it at all, unless it's somebody I'm traveling with and they wanna be in the image, of course. Um, here's another good example of moving water. Uh, so this one and the next one, I did a little bit longer shutter speed than I normally would for moving water. This one worked at eight seconds. This one worked at 13 seconds. The reason for the difference here is Again, I don't like the super smooth water, but it worked in this case. And then here, I went with 13 seconds to gather enough light so that this uh, the front of this building wasn't completely dark and in shadow. So the sun's coming in from behind it. This was completely dark. I wanted to capture the sun rays coming in here uh, through the mist of the water and also enough light that I could raise the shadows here and you'd be able to see the front of the building with a little bit of detail. Uh, Moving on, I'm going to get to a couple more of the creative shots here. And what I wanted to show you here is sort of this sort of creative uh, creative handling of your shutter speed in order to gather a little bit more light and, and create something a little bit more interesting. So light trails. Uh, when you're photographing cars going by on a road, I can't give you a set shutter speed and say, this is always going to work for you. Uh, this is a good one to go out and practice at home. You can do this uh, <laughs> by any road and see how fast uh, your shutter speed needs to be in order to capture that motion. And with, with light trails, uh, it has to do with, specifically with cars, how fast they're driving past, how many cars are driving past, uh, how bright the scene is. So again, this is very late at night. So like when you're photographing, let's say the front of your house at night, uh, the later it gets, the longer you're going to have to leave your shutter speed open to create a bright enough image that you can capture some detail. Uh, with light trails with cars, you just have to practice. And this is not the type of scene that you're going to stumble across and just pull out your cell phone or your camera and just snap a quick shot and move on. You're going to stand here and think about it for a moment and play with your camera settings and figure out how long does my shutter speed need to be in order to capture the taillights of the car going away from me. Uh, in this particular situation, I just got lucky. There was a car coming into the other end of the tunnel at the exact same time. So I got a little bit of light down there creating that nice uh, point of interest at the end of the tunnel as well. So here's the example photo from the worksheet here, if you're following along. Uh, 25 second exposure. Uh, knowing what I know now, I probably would do this a little bit differently. This is a photo I made in, uh, in Indonesia 2015. And 
I, I wanted it to be a long enough exposure that I could show the people moving around here, show uh, <laughs> them standing there snapping photos with their cell phones, uh, but not uh, not blow out completely the, the highlights and the details in this statue. So again, knowing what I know now, I probably would do this in a few different frames. That's again, you know, just an editing trick, not something you need to know. Uh, I will cover some of the editing in a, in a later video, uh, but just play with your, you know, play with your shutter speed to see what kind of creative effects you can get out of, out of specifically, you know, dark scenes. If you want to get even a little bit more creative, uh, like here's a good example where I put a filter on the end of my lens to darken it even further so I could do a longer exposure without blowing out the lights on the buildings here in the back. And that longer exposure allowed me to show the clouds that were moving over in the sky. It was kind of windy that night, so it was pushing the clouds nice and quickly. So I got a little bit of motion in the sky there while still having some nice detail on the buildings and the bean here in the foreground. Uh, here again, probably a photo I would do differently now. Uh, night scene in the Badlands in South Dakota. I wanted to have a long enough shutter speed to gather enough light to illuminate the, the landscape here. But I, at the time, didn't know any better, so I let the shutter open too long and I started to get some motion on the stars here in the sky. I could go fix that in post in, uh, in Photoshop, but I, I kind of liked the little bit of motion going on there. Uh, now I would either do that intentionally where I have the star trails moving through the sky there, or I would do this in a couple of different frames. So I have a frame for the sky and a frame for the foreground and then blend the two together. So here's an example with star trails. This was about a 40 minute exposure. Uh, again, knowing what I know now, I would probably capture this a little bit differently. I do like the way the sky turned out, have the awesome star trails. You can tell the earth is spinning there but the foreground came out still too dark and grainy. So I just kind of darkened it down so that all of the interest really goes to the, to the sky and you're not really paying attention too much to what's going on in the foreground. Uh, so that is, that's all I wanted to cover here as far as the shutter speeds. Try and, uh, if you're following along with these exercises, try and replicate each of these five images on the worksheet as far as the fast shutter speed, handheld shutter speed, you know, how low can you go on your shutter speed? in order to uh, to get a usable photo in a dark situation and uh, just how steady are your hands and what can you get out of your camera that you're working with. And then when you go with longer shutter speeds, you really do need to be on a tripod in order to capture something lower than probably 1 60th or 1 50th of a second. So if you're gonna get any kind of creative images in darker situations, moving water, then you're gonna need to be on a tripod. All right, that's it for shutter speed. Oh.